All right, looks like we're on here. Let's get this thing started. Welcome everyone to our traffic and conversion webinar tonight. I'm Sterling. And I'm Jay. And yeah, recently we've been talking a lot about uh, traffic and conversion and, and what we call our money magnifiers on our show. And if you haven't listened to some of those recent episodes, we definitely recommend that you take a look at those. Uh, there's four money magnifiers we've been going through. The first is, and by money magnifiers, we mean those things that can boost your income in your uh, internet business. These are the, the four areas that we look at every, you know, about every quarter to say, okay, how can we reach a new level of uh, reach? people, helping people out, and more income for ourselves. And uh, number one is by getting more traffic. Obviously, you get more traffic, you sell more stuff. Number two is by converting more people into email subscribers and buyers. So conversion is the second area. Number three is by in increasing the lifetime value of each customer or the amount of stuff that they buy from you by delivering more value to them. And number four is coming up with new ways to deliver new products and services for delivering new value to the customers that you have. We're going to focus on two of those areas specifically this evening, and that is traffic and conversion because, well, they're, they're very critical. The things that you should be concentrating on your business at any time, whether you're just starting out and and just getting going here, maybe you don't even have a product yet, traffic and conversion are still gonna be important for you know starting to get attention to people, building your list. And uh, conversion is going to help you get more people onto those lists if you're just starting out. Or if you're already selling stuff online, obviously more traffic and conversion will just help you make more money off of those products and services that you uh, already have. So wherever you're at in your business, there's something for you on uh, the call this evening. We're going to be giving you some specific step-by-step uh, -step plans in each of those areas in both traffic and conversion that you can put into action starting right away and start seeing some results. But actually, it's not just us yeah, Sterling and I, they're going to be speaking to you. We're going to be doing something a little bit different, something we haven't done before, and that is we're going to bring in some of our top advisors. And this is actually something we don't really see a whole lot of people doing ever in, in this industry. You know, be, behind every one of uh, you know, the internet marketing gurus, so to speak, there's this team of people behind them that help with all the, all the stuff they do. And we've talked about you know, having a good team a lot, having good virtual assistants, programmers, graphic designers, transcriptionists, and stuff like that. But uh, there's also, it's very important to have you know, advisors that give you that outside perspective for strategy and, and marketing and putting your products together. And of course, we talk about masterminds and mentors, but uh, we also have very key team members behind us that, you know, they're not the face of the business like we are, but these are friends, colleagues, smart people that we've had the fortune of uh, of associating with over time who have often given us great ideas, written copy for us, implemented campaigns for us, uh, sold uh, our products for us, and we wanted to bring these people on, the, on, the, on the, the webinar for you this evening so you could learn directly from them as well. Well, I wanted to mention one real quick thing about them as well, and that is that these... Uh, uh, though they are friends of ours, uh, they're, they're people who have converted for us, which means <laughs> what they do has worked for us, or right. they wouldn't be on here. Uh, I mean, it's funny to think of some of the things that, uh, you know, obviously we have our, our copywriter who writes the copy that has helped us hit seven figures with our business, as well as, of course, uh, you know, our our SEO guy who uh, has helped us get to, you know, in the top two of one of the craziest keywords on Google uh, that we're a part of, over a billion pages on it, and we're number two because of some of the help he's uh, you know, done for us. So, I mean, these are people that actually have done really good work for us and uh, that is, have uh, worked with us for quite a while now. At least one or two years is the least amount of time they've worked for us. So, you know, I just wanted to add that as well. Yeah, people we've worked with for a while, people who've gotten results for us, and people who've gotten results for us very recently. So this is stuff that's working uh, right now. So we're going to bring uh, each of these three people in turn online for about 10 or 15 minutes and have them share with you a couple specific tips and action steps that you can take either in the traffic or in the conversion area of your business. So you'll get a money magnifier or multiple money magnifiers from each of them. And then at the end, 
You're going to also hear from us personally how we boosted our Academy income by 20% in the last two months. So a couple very important specific tips that have helped us. And think about that, 20% increase. You know, wherever you're at in your business, think if you had 20% pay raise today, I mean, that's pretty significant. And you know, a lot of us are coming from the employee standpoint of things, we're, you know, Feel, we feel thrilled if we were lucky to get maybe two or three percent in a year. Now, think in the last two months, we saw a 20 percent increase, and we're going to tell you how we did that uh, at the end of the call. You'll be hearing from us. So, a big conversion tip there. Yeah, and thanks to a lot of the strategies these guys have helped us with, and things that uh, we now know. Uh, it won't be just 20% this this year. It was just for the last couple of months. We'll be able to keep, uh, you know, keep on doing that from now on. That's the exciting part is to see how much higher we can get that conversion to go. Absolutely. Now, as you can tell, we got a lot of stuff we want to get through, and we don't we don't want to keep you too long here. We just want to give you some nice, concise. Uh, c just good juicy content. We're probably not going to have any time for questions to t bring people on the line or have them send in and, and answer questions over the audio. But if you do send them in through the question box, we'll see if we can get to some of those and we might send you a text answer back. So feel free to do that. Uh, but without any further ado, let's dive into the content. Let's get started. All right, so let's kick this thing off. The first uh, person we're going to bring online, I'm sure, is not a stranger to many people listening to this, uh, none other than Pat Flynn, who's uh, been a longtime uh, friend, colleague, listener of Internet Business Mastery, an Academy member, somebody whose uh, uh, progress and goings-on in business have been very exciting to watch. He's done everything from uh, you know, succeed in his architecture uh, niche to then starting his own uh, very popular Smart Passive Income blog and most recently a Smart Passive Income uh, podcast as well. And what uh, some of you may not know is that he's also been working behind the scenes with us for a while, uh, helping us out also with traffic and conversion. When we uh, meet smart people, we like to work with smart people, and he is one of those smart people that has been uh, helping us behind the scenes, and now it's time to bring him. I mean, he's been you know out there on the Internet forward for quite some time, but bring him forward on this webinar too and, and talk about traffic and conversion a bit. So, uh, Pat, thank you very much much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be back on the uh, back kind of talking with you guys again. Back on the mic with yeah. Sterling and Jay. That's <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, Pat, you've helped us with a number of different things uh, with the new sales funnel, with doing some Facebook stuff, with doing some YouTube stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, most recently you've been shaking it up with some new Facebook uh, strategies for promoting your own your own things, your your blog and and so forth. So I thought it would be cool to focus in on on that. As you know, this webinar is all about traffic and conversion. So let's talk about Facebook traffic. Mm -hmm. But the logical place to start out is, uh, well, why is Facebook important? You know, for considering the scheme of different things we could do in traffic, and there's no end to the possibilities, but why is Facebook something significant that you would recommend people pay attention to uh, these days as a traffic source? Well, okay. There, there's over 500 million registered users on Facebook. I mean, everybody is on Facebook nowadays. I know you guys are. I am. My mom is on Facebook. Uh, right. My grandma's on Facebook. She yeah, mine me too. the other day. <laughs> like, wow, it's crazy. Yeah, I had to think twice on that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, your grandma. Sorry. Oh, well, my, gra well, my grandma's friending you, then man, <laughs> things are getting hey, around. Hey. That's wild. <laughs> Um, and, and the crazy part about it is that, you know, these people, these 500 million registered users, they're spending an average of 20 minutes a day on Facebook. And I don't know if you know this, but, uh, you know, the average time that someone spends on a website is seven seconds. Right. You know, they go there, they don't want to be there, and then they leave. You know, 20 minutes a day on Facebook, and, and that's just an average. So, I mean, there's a ton of people spending, uh, you know, even more time on it, and I'm probably yeah. included on that. So. Uh, you know, so, so it's important for any business, any blog, or any website to have some type of Facebook presence because that's where everyone is. And not only that, it's 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 the way Facebook is structured that is so attractive. I mean, we're all familiar with how Facebook works, uh, but if you kind of step back and see what's actually happening, it, it's it's crazy. I mean, the whole viral effect of sharing information and understanding what everyone else is doing can just take any post or link that you put up there. Uh, and, and just have it spread like wildfire. I mean, getting your brand, your website, your message in front of people's faces that you would normally never have reached otherwise. And, and, and the real true beauty about it is the whole the whole kind of we're spying on what our friends are doing and everything. 
Uh, that that's kind of the scary part of it, but that's the beauty of it too. Um, cause, cause say, you know, for example, I, you know, I put a link out there and, and then someone likes it or someone comments on it and then their friends see that they, you know, their friends see that, that activity and a recommendation from a friend or kind of an endorsement by a friend is far stronger than any type of recommendation or, or endorsement that I could do to someone who I want to be a part of my audience. I mean, it's all about social proof. And I know you've, you've talked about this before. I remember a few episodes you used the example of kind of the, uh, you know, you go to a farmer's market and, and you want some lunch and you just automatically go to that line that's, that has the biggest line, even though you don't know what it is. It's just that's what where, where people are. That's where what people are interested in. So you kind it of – must be the good grub if everyone's lining up for it. Exactly, exactly. So Facebook kind of has that, that same effect. And you know, another reason why I love Facebook so much uh, is that you, you, even though we talk about expanding our reach and getting in front of people's faces that you would normally uh, never reach otherwise, in a way – you're kind of shrinking your universe too, so you're really getting that kind of small town feeling with the entire world. You know, getting personal, knowing what everyone else is up to. You know, in a small town, they're all closely knit friends, and and everyone knows what everyone's doing. You know, little Johnny just graduated from high school or whatever, and uh, it's just bringing that feeling of the small town back into your brand. So you're kind of the mom, and you you get to become the mom and pop shop. You know. Uh, Never before in time that you had the ability to follow what a business was doing and, and actually get to, like, speak to them right away. I know Twitter does that a little bit, but Facebook is, is – I mean, that's where all the traffic is, and it's a little bit better about keeping conversations. And they're always working to improve things, and the whole like button that that's coming out and fan pages, it's it's just amazing. And, and ever since implementing some of these tips that we're going to be going over, uh, it's, it's my traffic's just skyrocketed. And the, and the thing about the traffic that comes from Facebook – it's very, very sticky, and they, uh, out of all the different places I get traffic, you know, I was just checking on Google Analytics today, just to, uh, you know, in preparation for this webinar, um, the traffic just they spend the most time on the site, out of all the other, all the other. Uh, wow. You know, I, I don't know if it's because of the whole engagement factor that we were just talking about, and uh, but I mean they they spend a significant amount more time on my site than any other traffic uh, source. Right. Well, that's awesome. I dig that. So, uh, let's say, I mean, we got a lot of people listening to this. Let's say, you know, whether they're, uh, whether you're just brand new starting out or even you've been doing business for a little while that you want to incorporate Facebook into your traffic strategy. What, what's the, what's the first step? What's a couple tips that you can give uh, people to, to get going with, uh, with leveraging this? Sure. I mean, there's a few ways to go about it. Uh, the first thing I would recommend is, you know, actually getting a Facebook page. You know, you can have your profile, your personal profile out there, but it's it's good to separate your business and your personal profile. You know, I have my personal profile with my friends from high school and college, and my parents and uh, my family members. But then I also have my Smart Passive Income Facebook page, which is kind of my brand, and that's where I can talk business and uh, go over marketing tips and if whatever niche you're in, you can talk about those types of things. You know, offer links, you can offer affiliate links on there, what have you. Um, so so creating a Facebook page first is the obvious. Kind of thing to do, but on top of that, you really want to create what's called a landing page. Now, this now, if you don't set up a landing page, whenever you send people over to Facebook or they find you on Facebook search, or they, you know, they could also possibly find you through Google uh, and land on your Facebook page. Um, they will be taken to your wall, and the wall is where all that information is. You know, the whole history of discussions, and it's just really messy. And 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 I, I imagine someone. Kind of brand new, especially in the niches that aren't in the internet marketing industry and blogging industry. You know, if someone lands on a wall for the first time, they're just kind of going to be overwhelmed. I mean, there's going to be a lot of conversations going on. Really, want, what you want to do is create a landing page, and the purpose of a landing page is to do one thing. You know, it's sort of like a squeeze page in the internet marketing industry, where all you're trying to do is capture their email. Well, the same idea applies here for Facebook. You create a landing page, which becomes the first page that people land on, and all you're trying to get them to do is click on that like button at the very top because that's okay. what enables them to become a fan. That's what enables them to then see all of your status updates and all the messages and links that you put out on their own wall and get notified on their own page, you know, whether they're using their iPhone or their Android phone or they're on, you know, TweetDeck and they have Facebook integrated or they just go to their Facebook page normally. So setting up a landing page is really important, and the things you want to do on your landing page is obviously say, you know, give them a call to action, say, hey, please click on that like button at the top. Uh, also, you can kind of introduce who you are, um, what 
you do, why they should become a fan, what the benefits are, and you can use social proof to be, uh, and say, you know, there's I have ten thousand fans. Why don't you why don't you uh, join us? Kind of the same idea so that we were talking about before. So the landing page is really important. I know you guys implemented that as well. Uh, Okay, so step one is you get a you get a fan page separate from the profile, something that can be just for your brand or your business. Step two is make sure that that when somebody goes to your fan page, they land on uh, rather than on the wall, it's on a landing page with a call to action to like mm-hmm. that uh, like your page, so that then they're getting those updates from your page um, and also providing that social proof that they liked the page. Exactly. Um, and so, okay, so we got those two good steps right there. Awesome. Uh, what, what kinds of uh, – so you mentioned the stickiness. I mean that's actually – you know, I hadn't uh, heard that, but it makes a lot of sense. I, you know, I don't know if I can provide a, a conjecture as to why that is, but it's all in the numbers, and that's very cool that you've been tracking that because, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, not all traffic sources are created equal just because a traffic source can send you thousands and thousands of visitors. What's really as important is do they stick around? Do they engage? Do they sign up for the email list? Do they buy stuff? You know, what is that visitor worth to you? Um, so that's uh, I'm you know, very encouraged hearing that uh, statistic there. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else What else would you recommend? Or are there things that you see people do that are pitfalls when they're first starting out with Facebook? Anything else to offer? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because a lot of people set up these pages and they do, uh, you know, they set up uh, – you know, an automatic RSS feed. So whenever they create a blog post or something or write a new article, it just automatically posts to their Facebook page. And that's fine. But sometimes that's all that people have. And so, you know, there's not really any engagement involved. There's no, uh, you know, it's, it's really obvious when something's just automatically placed up there. Uh, so, so I would really, you know, you, you can do that. And there's, there's really easy applications that allow you to do so to hook up an RSS feed, RSS feed to your Facebook wall. But I would, I would, you know, every once in a while, and it doesn't have to be, you know, every 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be uh, even more than once a day. But at least once a day, I would say, you know, go on there and, and engage with your community. I mean, that's really what it's all about. It's a social network. You have to be social. Um, you know, if you're in a mom and pop shop, you know, you, you get to know the, the owners. And, and that's what makes that really deep connection that makes you want to come back and keep coming back and keep, uh, you know, paying them money for, for their business. So, uh, you know, really just, I mean, and in, 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 in you could just ask, you know, random questions just, just to get people to kind of interact with you, uh, whether it's, you know, what are you guys doing or uh, what's your, you know, if, if you have like a, a basketball blog or something, you can just put, hey, who's your favorite player and why, you know, really, really little things like that. Or even, you know, uh, maybe not all the time, but you can just, you know, put add a little bit of personal things in there like, hey, I'm headed out to the, to, uh, I don't know, a restaurant with my wife. What do you guys think I should eat tonight? Here are my choices. You know, really things like that that kind of, again, bring people closer to you and who you are and what your brand is about. Um, you know, I, I would recommend following, uh, you know, actually, <laughs> Britney Spears has a really good Facebook page, actually. Um, she, she, oh, really? En- she does. She engages her Don't community. I know it. <laughs> oh, I mean. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, the, I don't know if it's, it's, I, I mean, I doubt it's actually her, uh, posting, but I mean, the way she engages her community, um, and gets people hyped and excited about, you know, the tours that she comes out with or her music and, and stuff like that. She, she actually is, has a really good example, um, of, of what you could do. Um, they, I mean, there's a there's a lot of people out there. there there's actually a person named Mary Smith, who is a kind of a Facebook uh, kind of guru, social media guru, who who, you know, who I kind of base a lot of what I do on Facebook too, as well, uh, as far as just engaging the community, getting people involved, asking questions, holding polls, which you can. Uh, I think that recently you can start doing that, where you ask a question, and you can set actually. Uh, answers that people can choose from. So, I mean, immediately that's your, I, I know we always talk about using survey, uh, survey monkey or, you know, kiss metrics or something to get, you know, quick analytics, uh, in a poll like fashion, but now Facebook can do that too. So it's an immediate access to uh, the inside of your audience's head. So if you are coming out with a new product or something and you want to get a little bit more information about your community, you can do, uh, you, you can go that route. You know, I've gotten so many ideas on what to write about just from all the different, questions I've asked on, on the page and, you know, it really makes people feel like they're involved. You know, if you can get your community involved in your business and, and, uh, c- kind of make it, f- make them feel like they're actually taking a part in what you do and, and what you're providing. I mean, that, that goes a really, really long way. And then they're more than happy to spread the word about what you do because, you know, they feel like they've had a part in it. Absolutely. 
All right, cool. Well, that makes that makes a lot of sense. So Britney Spears' uh, page is one to check out. Can you think of, I don't know, is there one or two other? Uh, I mean, yeah, some of these big brands, they have really smart people who you know, have, have tried different things out and have figured out what works well on Facebook. Have you seen maybe one or two other ones that work really well that people can reference for ideas? Uh, Kanye West has a good one. Um, the show Modern Family, if you, if you become a fan of the show Modern Family, that one's really good. Um, uh, well, and I wanted to give a, a couple of examples too. Uh, when you're done of landing pages, so oh when sure, you're done, sure. You were saying Dexter probably. Dexter, yeah, that he has a really good uh, um, or that show has a really good uh, <laughs> uh um, I don't know if it's Dexter actually posting in those messages, but um, he he actually or the the Dexter page is actually really good to look at. Um, as far as landing pages, which which I'm glad you brought that up. There, there's a few that are good out there, just for examples that you can go to the Green Bay Packers. Have a good landing page. They actually uh, do this thing where you go on their landing page, and it's, it, it looks like you're looking at their website on their landing page, but it's kind of uh, it's kind of dim. Uh, and then there's a little kind of message in the middle that says, "In order to have access to all our information, please click the like button above." Uh, so then it kind of oh, nice. acts like it's going to kind of brighten up and open up after you click that button, uh, which is really cool. Social Media Examiner they have a great one that actually incorporates a video. As well, so that's something else you could think about. So there's there's an arrow pointing up to click the like button, and a and a video that you could play that uh, probably says, you know, this is what we're about, this is what we do. Please click on the like button, and and this is what you get. You know, you can also have opt-in forms on your page as well. Uh, although I would I would do that on the landing page myself because you know you want them to do one thing and one thing only when they get there, and that's click on the like button. So the less options they have. The, the more chances are they're going to do whatever it is that one call to action is you want them to do. Yeah, and we have a really simple uh, uh, landing page, and you can check that out at facebook.com forward slash Internet Business Mastery. And what's yours so people can check that out too? Oh, um, facebook.com slash Smart Passive Income. And also I've I created a uh, URL to make it a little bit easier for people to get there, pat on facebook.com. Nice. Oh, nice. Well, there's a tip. Yep. Get a URL and, and have it forward over. I like that. Ooh. Very good. Well, thank you, Pat, for, for sharing those ideas. I know you've been trying lots of the different cool stuff out, and I think those uh, yeah, those, those are some great actions people can take today and start seeing some results uh, come from them. So we certainly appreciate the time uh, coming on the webinar this evening. Hey, no problem. Thanks for having me. And really, ever since I started working with Facebook, it's been my top traffic producer. For my site. There you go. There you go. And we'll be sharing later in the webinar how you can find out more from Pat as far as Facebook traffic tips as well as some of the other cool stuff that he's been up to. All right. Next uh, on the line, let's go ahead and bring on uh, Mike Dennison, who's been a friend and a colleague of ours for uh, quite a few years now. And in fact, is, you know, I guess one of the earliest advisors that we brought on at Internet Business Mastery. We had the uh, fortune of getting to know him a few years back and uh, and chatting with him about, you know, the need of having an, that outside voice when it came to our copy and when it came to converting and our offers and, uh, you know, just having somebody to, to give us, you know, bounce around ideas. We're always talking about having good mentors and good masterminds and, and uh, and people like that. And Mike has definitely been a great help in our business and helping us grow the academy and doing various launches. Uh, surely you've read some emails that he's written in the past for us or helped us write or looked over. Uh, so even though you may have never known that he was there, you've definitely <laughs> felt his influence coming into Internet Business Mastery and the way that uh, we operate. Uh, the way that we operate. And Mike has worked with a number of different businesses, both online and offline, writing uh, copy, which you know things like uh, sales letters and, and copy for emails and websites, and, uh, and planned a number of off online and offline promotions for various companies uh, to great success. So uh, thank you very much, Mike, for joining us on the webinar this evening. Hey, thanks, guys. Usually I'm uh, hiding behind my uh, keyboard, but uh, this time we'll see if my voice can uh, do it all justice, huh? All right. We'll bring bringing you in the forefront. <laughs> you strangely sound just like us. Oh, wait. No, that's your writing. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> that's always the goal is to sound like the client, right? So Yeah. That's right. So, so my copywriting, I, that's something that you're very good at that uh, I know that's not my favorite thing to do, hence one of the reasons we enjoy working with you. Uh, and 
I'm sure a lot of people listening to this, they know that, you know, at some point they've got to write, uh, well, an email at the very least or some kind of promotional message or maybe even a, a sales video or put together a sales letter of some sort. And, and it's always that conundrum when you start out of, you know, being able to write good copy takes some time and experience and just kind of doing it. Or you get to hire somebody, but it's not the cheapest thing to do. So the beginner can kind of be stuck in this quandary of, well, how do I put together some good copy? So we wanted to bring you on to give some good uh, tips and, and help them a little bit with a couple ideas they can put into action right away. And let's focus specifically on email because I think even if somebody's just starting out as a beginner or if they're inter, you know, intermediate already making money, still you know, email is a critical part of the business. I think uh, you, know, you can't get away from writing email in an internet business for sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and focus on that. And so my first question for you would be, why why is email copywriting or putting some some effort into the effectiveness of your email important for an internet business? Uh, well, like anything, you know that for many online businesses, uh, other than their websites, is the primary way that they have personal interaction with their customers. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's just like if you have a retail store and customers are coming in and you are able to chat with them and find out, uh, you know, what they're looking for and how to help them. Email is really, the way I see it, the primary way to, that you can engage in that conversation. Even though it doesn't feel like a conversation, it is because it's going on in the customer's head. And so, you know, so much of Internet marketing now is focusing on SEO work, which is important, or, uh, you know, other types of traffic sources, which are vitally important. I still think that uh, email is probably one of the key things to uh, maintain a business because that is how you keep the relationship going and the dialogue going with your customers over the long term. Yeah, it's funny. It seems like uh, it's somehow glossed over in this Internet marketing world, even though – it's the, one of those top things. Like it's so strange that uh, it isn't spoken about as often as it should be. Yeah, you, well, you know. Oh, go ahead, Jason. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, I think it's because it's not as sexy as Twitter or podcasting or Facebook or these other channels, which are viable. But yeah, email is absolutely still the the top way that we engage our market for money making purposes. You know, when we want an off, put an offer out there, email is the channel that brings in the money. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, it's funny because, uh, you know, 10 years or so ago, that, that was the key and everybody was focusing on it because it was still so new. And then, you know, there have been a few cycles that have happened over the last few years where people will say, oh, email marketing's dead and this and that. And, and uh, I kind of beg to differ. I help clients generate millions of dollars just, you know, purely through email. They do very little else but right. email marketing and, and, you know, driving traffic from their list to their websites through email. It works. Absolutely. All right. So let's say we've got somebody listening to this. Maybe they're a beginner. Or maybe they're making a bit of money online, but they know. I mean, we, we've talked a lot on our show and on this webinar how uh, if you can get more traffic or convert a little bit more of that traffic, you can you give yourself a pay raise. Your business will make more money. So let's talk about a couple tips that uh, you could share with the audience this evening that they could put into action to have more effective email communications and, see, and start seeing those bumps in, in whether it be open rates or click rates or – or just in the amount of money that their email uh, their email campaigns make for them. Right. Well, the the very first thing that I'm going the, the biggest secret that I can give. It might sound like a cop out, but uh, when I first started to learn how to write direct response copy, what twenty whatever years ago, twenty plus years ago, um, what I started to do, and again, this was all pre email. This was direct mail and print ads, copying what people were doing there. As I learned it was I would literally copy what they were doing. You know, I would find an ad and I liked the way they worded a guarantee, for example, and I would just take it and use it as my own and, and like it or not. I mean, that happens all the time in the advertising world and especially in direct marketing. When somebody um, catches on to something that's working uh, for conversions, everybody starts doing it. You know, the uh, if people are familiar, for example, like with the Belcher button, uh, on websites, you know, to get people to, you know, click a button, you know, once that uh, was proven to be a tested good way to do it, everybody copied it. So what I would recommend is get on other people's uh, mailing lists and see um, what kinds of emails they're writing and, you know, people that you respect and you know that they have good viable businesses and start to copy the way they do uh, sorts of things, you know, whether it's subject lines or you, way that you like the way they um, uh, do a call to action in their emails, you know, go here, 
to do this, it's totally fine to do that. Um, you don't have to be 100% original all the time. It's fine as you get started and start learning to copy other people. So, it, and, and don't think that uh, other people don't do it. Everybody does it um, because that's the way you learn and get better. And then you refine those. You know, as you do get better at it, you refine it and make it your own. You know, add your own voice to it. So that's probably number one is uh, just find other things that you think are working well out there and start to copy them. And another thing that I have found uh, with people who have a list is, and, and let's say they catch on to something like doing product launches and they say, great, I'm going to follow the uh, product launch uh, process and do it three times a year when I introduce a new product or something like that. But what happens is they'll... Um, They'll go quiet between that period, so they'll finish up a launch, and they're exhausted, and then they start thinking about creating a new product or something else. And you know, some period of time can go by where they are not emailing their list. And so you need to email your list regularly so that there aren't these big gaps between your messages. Because, again, if this is a relationship, you need to nurture that relationship. And so then the question comes up, all right, well, you know, what do I do if I don't have anything to promote or I'm out of ideas or, you know, I don't know what else to do, uh, what can I do? And one of the things I like to do is, you know, even if you don't have anything new to talk about, you can always make news. And uh, when I tell people that, they kind of look at me, you know, with a, I can see the big question mark hovering over their head. And uh, a, a couple ways that I like to make it easy is I'll look for things that are happening in uh, – the news headlines in newspapers or whatever or in pop culture and somehow relate them to what I'm doing. So, for example, um, uh, one place that I think really has its finger on the pulse of what's going on news-wise is Drudge Report. I'll just go up there and see what's kind of going on. You know, sometimes they'll have uh, typical major news stuff that's happening, and sometimes they have odd little stories as well that, that you can uh, pull out. And, uh, in fact, I was looking up there uh, yesterday, and I'm going to see if it's still up there. Yeah, they have a, one headline about there's a, a new drug-resistant superbug that's hitting uh, Los Angeles area hospitals and nursing homes. And so I can look at that, and let's say that I have, um, uh, like, uh, a service that, that locks down your identity, so, you know, prevents identity theft and things like that, and I could, uh, you know, write – this email around the fact that, well, there's this drug resistant superbug, but, you know, prevent yourself from being infected in your life by this other thing. And, it, you know, you may feel like it's a stretch, but really it's not because, you know, you're tying it in there and then you make the transition over to, hey, protect your business or protect your life or whatever else with that. So that's one example of how you can do that. Um, another one that I was thinking about the other day was, um, I work a lot with uh, clients in the stock market industry, and um, you, you know you need to be sensitive about something like uh, what's happened in Japan with the tragedies over there. But I think there are, are ways that you can relate that and uh, you, you know make it a, a valuable sales tool for yourself, um, where you can talk about, hey, this you know the earthquake hit; they were prepared for it, but what they weren't prepared for was this you know ensuing tsunami that came, and you know there's no way you can prepare for that in a real life situation. But in trading, stock market trading, there are ways that you can uh, prepare yourself so that you don't get uh, swept away by um, market tsunamis. You know, so that's another way that you can do it. You do need to be a little bit careful with those sorts of things, but it's again just a way that you can take what's happening in the news, a typical news story that will um, that either people are familiar with or you can, you know, use to raise awareness or curiosity and then make it your own and link it to what you're doing. Um, you know, like for you guys, we could say something such as uh, news headlines about food prices being on the rise, uh, you know, and inflation going up and things like that and say, hey, you know, a regular job isn't going to cut it because wages are not going up, but prices are going up. How How do you compete with in that situation and the way that right. you do it is by adding another source of income to your life so that's a, a really powerful way i think uh, to create news when you don't have news of your own is to go out and look for uh, headline stories that are out there and relate them to your business good stuff 
All right. Well, excellent tip. So the, the, the first tip that we talked about was what the copywriters call swiping or having a swipe file. So just look and see what seems to be working well for, for respected, from respected sources and use that in your own copy. Uh, a funny example of that would be, you know, next time you're in the, standing in the grocery aisle, look at the magazines and look at the headline on a magazine like Cosmo or Vogue. And, you know, it might be something about beauty tips or, 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 you know, something like that. But these are designed specifically to get people to open that magazine up. And sometimes when I'm just standing there bored rather than staring at the candy bars mindlessly and, and thinking about buying one, I'll look at the magazines and I'll, I'll look at a headline. And in my mind, they'll go, hmm, how could I take that headline and adapt it to what it is that I'm doing? Exactly. And because those are tested and proven. That, and, and you'll be probably thinking, man, I see the same headlines over and over. And that's right. It's because they work. And uh, so, so that's just an idea to throw out there. Then, so your second tip then was be consistent. Uh, don't you know? Keep keep yourself as I guess marketers say at the top of mind of your market by emailing them on a regular basis. Get them used to hearing from you. And I like that idea about creating news using current events, or I suppose you could even use uh, holidays, obviously, or uh, just things in pop culture to uh, tie into what are, what's already on people's minds anyway in, in, in their life and, and what they're seeing around uh, around the world. So uh, does that sum it up pretty well there, Mike? Uh, yeah, if you have time. I've got one more uh, brief one that, uh, that I think is pretty helpful. We sure, always have more time. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, you know, most people set their marketing calendar around uh, big events, big promotions or big launches or whatever. And again, so when you have this downtime in between them, Another uh, little way that you can uh, promote other products is uh, uh, just to send out an email that says something like, hey, I was looking through my sales reports, and it blew me away that uh, product X, you know, this other product, is still selling really well because we haven't promoted it in a long, long time. So, uh, you know, customers are finding this to be super valuable because it does X, Y, and Z for you. Here's a link where you can find out more about it. So it's kind of like, you know, wow, I was blindsided that uh, – you know, I haven't really been promoting this, but people are still buying it like crazy. Here's the link to it. So just little things like that. You know, you don't have to um, make it a major event to promote stuff. You can just do, you know, little quick things and send out little reminders to people. And, uh, you know, each one may not um, equal a huge launch or something like that. But, uh, you know, a few sales here, a few sales there, and they uh, add up over the course of a year. Yeah, not everything has to be a, a huge, full-on, uh, big launch like sometimes people see in the marketplace or see us do. So, yeah, I like that. That's a good reminder. Exactly. They just need reminders. It's like you're at the checkout stand, and, and you know, you, you usually wouldn't buy, you know, this little candy bar, but it's right there, and you're hungry, so bam, you get it. Right. Absolutely. Awesome. Good stuff. Thank you very much, Mike, for uh, sharing those tips on conversion with uh, the audience. I think there's definitely some very usable things people can put into action starting today. And uh, later in the call this evening, we'll tell you how you can get even more tips uh, from Mike regarding your conversions on your website and also an email. So uh, thanks again, Mike, for joining us this evening. My pleasure. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. All right, so now on the line, we're going to bring on Rob Burns, and uh, Rob's working with us recently when it comes to uh, getting traffic, specifically with link building, has been able to do some amazing things with uh, our own site, yeah, of course, with Internet Business Mastery, one of the keywords that we want to be found for in the search engines is the phrase Internet Business. And that would just be a, a, you know, a logical one since those people are targeted towards the kinds of stuff that we talk about and are likely looking for the kind of information that we have. And just through all the kinds of stuff that we teach in the academy and creating great content for the last while, you know, we've naturally been able to build up our search engine rankings and finally show up on the first page for the search of Internet business inside of Google. But uh, as any you know, search engine uh, expert will tell you, the most most of the traffic comes from being in those top three search results. So when somebody searches for internet business, we want to be in you know the first, second, or third slot because that's where most of the clicks come from. So it was about time that we pushed ourselves to the top. And in order to do that, we brought in the uh, expertise and help of a friend of ours, Rob Burns, in order to help us build up the number of links pointing back to our site, a natural way to bring in traffic and uh, a great technique because you know it's uh, it's free to do. It's not like you have to go and pay tons of money like with that AdWords or you know, ads and things like that, you know, links are, are free. It just takes some time and effort to kind of build them up over time in a way that Google likes. And uh, that's something that Rob knows well. So thank you very much, Rob, for uh, joining us on the webinar this evening. Ah, hey, thanks for having me on. 
So I want to just kind of pick your brain a little bit here uh, as, uh, you know, we've been talking to different people. This is kind of a lightning round of giving everybody on the call tonight uh, some great tips for traffic and conversion. And uh, as you've been able to have great results with us, we wanted to talk to you about link building. So let's start off maybe just uh, chatting a little bit about, well, why, why is link building? Uh, well, what is link building and why is it important when it comes to getting you know, search engine rankings. I think everybody listening understands the higher you rank in Google for those targeted keywords, the more traffic you're going to get and hence you'll, you know, make more money over time. But why is link building specifically? What is it and why is it important when it comes to getting those search engine rankings? Right. Well, it's just like, the, you know, in, in real estate, you know, the old term, you know, location is everything. So, right. you know, and it's the same, you know, for your website, you know, it's kind of a, you know, plus it's, it's kind of like a high school popularity contest where, you know, as far as link building goes, you know, the more links, you know, that are pointing to you, you know, the more popular you are, the more you're going to rise into search rankings. And so, and so it's the same thing, you know, if, if you look at, uh, you know, your, your money phrase or your key phrase that, you know, relates to your website is, you know, a real estate property, you know, you write, you know, you're going to make more money and you're going to get more traffic if you're on Rodeo Drive than, you know, if you're in a, you know, a hot dog cart below the subway kind of thing. So. You know, really, it's it's about you know the you know the the more links you have, you know, the more uh, the search engines view your site is relevant, and the more you're gonna um, you know rise in the rankings, which of course then brings you more traffic. And and not only is is it more traffic, but it's it's traffic that converts better because in general, organic traffic, you know, by people that click on you know that click, think that um, that it's, it's more trusted because you know the, you know a paid ad is you know. You know, they view it as somebody paying to, you know, put their information on there and, and sell you something, whereas organic traffic, people view it as, you know, the search engine say, hey, this is uh, something important that I should see. Right. So I think we've all had that experience of searching for something on Google. And I think anybody, you know, who's done that will admit it's like, yeah, if something shows up at the top of the rankings, we kind of have this instant trust for that. And uh, when you, I'll just, for anybody who doesn't know, when you mention organic traffic, you meaning when somebody, when you're just showing up naturally in those search engine results rather than like over on the right hand side with ads and, and stuff that you've paid for. So it sounds like with link building, it's not only about just getting links on sites that people might see and click and hence come to your site, but that the search engines themselves, like Google, are looking at those links to determine your popularity going, well, every one of these links must mean that this is a good site, uh, that it's uh, got good content or else people wouldn't be linking to it. Is that kind of what you're saying? Correct, correct. And that's why it's important, too, to have uh, um, a wide variety of different kinds of links because that, you know, that appears to be, you know, much more natural. So if somebody, you know, as opposed to just doing, you know, one particular method of link building and they they just hammer their site with it, you know, it's not going to look right because Google's looking for, you know, almost a, a viral quality to the link building so that, you know, if, if some, you know, some new events happening or, you know, some new, maybe, you know, Coca-Cola comes out with a new kind of soda pop or something and people start writing yeah. about it, then, you know, that's how it's, how they're going to view it as relevant as opposed to just hundred thousand directory links or something like that. So, so it sounds like not all links are created equal. Correct. So like, like we could go and get, it'd be easy for me to go and post on a hundred different forums today and get a hundred links pointing back to my site, but that's not the same as say, so, so maybe talk about that a little bit. What, what determines like the quality of a link? Right. Um, you know, I, I always, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of a link, a link is a link is a link, you know, and I, I think there's very few bad links, but there, you know, some links are better than others. Um, and so, Really, you know, and, and there's a big debate about, you know, authority links from high PR sites, you know, and, and you know, for, for people that don't know, PageRank is something that, that's actually kind of a, a, a crippled, broken, broken thing on Google where, you know, like a, you know, a, a PR one site is going to have less relevance than a PR five site. But it's, you know, it's all kind of subjective. It's kind of a general, a general term because it's PR nine sites probably gonna have some authority and a PR zero site probably isn't. So, you know, that's. That's about as much as you should should know about that. But a, a PR five site may or may not have more weight than you know a PR one site. So it's it's good to to get a, a good mix of links from different kinds of sites and different kinds of properties and different ranges of PRs because if they're all you know if if there's a similar pattern then that you know that looks bad and it's not natural and and you know the search engines and mainly Google doesn't like that. Okay, so you're mentioning PR, which, which is page rank, a, kind of a, a loose idea of how authoritative Google thinks a site is, kind of based on links and stuff like that. How can you know what the page rank of your site is or, or of any particular site? How can you know? 
Yeah, there's actually uh, browser widgets you can find. It, I mean, if you if you just type in uh, PageRank tool in it, like a Google search, there'll be all kinds. There's different websites where you can type in, you know, you, you'll just put your URL in there and it'll tell you what the page ranks are. I would say that's the best way off the top of my head. I pay so little uh, attention to PageRank that, uh, that it, you know, I, I don't really spend a lot of time. I think uh, SEMrush, which is like a free, a free add-on to your uh, – Firefox browser and I think Safari also it'll 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 tell you page rank of a site. Okay. So when it comes to uh, link building, let's say you know somebody's listening to this, they've been creating great content for you know a while, maybe several months, maybe even a couple years, and they're getting traffic from that. And just because they're creating great content, which we know Google likes to list great content, they've had some success in the search engines. People have linked to their content anyway, just because they're creating great content. So we'll just take that as an understood. It's like, well, you got to start out by having good content to link to, and yes, people will just naturally link to it. Absolutely. But now let's say if you want to help things along. Long, uh, kind of like you did with with our site. What's like the first one or two things somebody should do to go? Okay, you know what? I want to build up more links so that I can push myself even a little further up in the rankings. What's what's step one? Well, great content is a good start, and to take that a little bit further, I would say really become an authority. Um, uh, that'll help you, you know, uh, PR wise. Um, because, you know, not only will links, links help you as far as just search engine results, but, you know, you can actually get a, a good place link and get, give you, you know, a fair amount of traffic on its own. So, you know, one, one great way is to become an expert. Find out other lateral businesses and websites that, that may relate to your business um, and, and, and directly contact them, like research their site and find the phone numbers and, and give, them up a call, give them a call and say, hey, I'd like to be an expert author for your site. I, I, I'll give you, you know, free content. I'll, you know, I'll write free uh, articles for you. You know, I just want a little, you know, a little uh, credit in the bio, you know, with a link to my site. You know, and, and then, you know, you can actually add, a, you know, your anchor text link, you know, for whatever your site relates to there. That's a great one. Uh, a mutual friend of ours, uh, Kevin Koskela, who owns TriSwim Coach, actually writes for a lot of other uh, running running triathlon swimming sites, you know, and, and he's the expert author and he gets a lot of backlinks and he also gets a lot of traffic just, you know, just from doing that. PR with, with press release, you know, not, you know, there's a lot of people out there that just do a press release just to, you know, for the backlink value. But if you write a really good press release that, you know, you have something that's, that's really important to write about, that'll gain you some traction. That'll get, you know, get you in, in, in the news. My wife's a professional organizer and she's actually one of the top professional organizers in the country and how she got there was doing a lot of local news interviews, which wound up, you know, getting her some national interviews. And, you know, now she's in Good Morning America and, you know, Better, you know, Better Homes and Gardens magazine and all that, all that good kind of stuff. And almost every single one of those has some form of a link that links back to her site. And that just gives her, you know, that much more credibility. Awesome. So you've got guest authoring, guest posting on other sites or being interviewed by those sites and then obviously leveraging from. So you might start out kind of small like your wife did with like local stuff and then you can leverage that like, Hey, I've written for so and so, or hey, I was interviewed by such and such radio station, and then leverage that into a bigger, and then an even bigger, and then even bigger, and next thing you know, you might be on uh, uh, Good Morning America, which is pretty awesome. With, uh, I mean, certainly a, a link back from Good Morning America site. I, I'm, I'm guessing Google's going to look at that and go, Hey, that's uh, indicative of some pretty good authority. If yeah, that, ab- you know. absolutely. That's yeah, that's that, that's a monster link. So that's that's a good one. You know, and, and even some of the magazines, because some of the magazines will put their you know a good portion of their articles you know online too. And usually, you know, if, if there's a, a link you know crediting you know the an author or an interviewee, you know, uh, she, one of the things she does also is is she'll she'll uh, contact a lot of the media and just say, hey, if you ever need you know kind of an extra expert opinion on something, you know, feel free to call me up. And you know, when, when they source her out. Um, then she get, usually gets a backlink that way also. Awesome. Good stuff. All right. So you, you mentioned earlier about how Google kind of wants to see this happen naturally. And so, you know, when I, from what I'm understanding, I mean, like, again, I could go out today and I could post on a hundred forums and have a hundred links right now, but is there kind of a methodology? I mean, I, I want, you know, I, let's say as an entrepreneur, I've only got so much time to spend every week. How can I get the most out of that time? You know, is it going in, well, let me go for quantity and I'll get 100 links on a forum, or is there a more strategic way day by day or week by week to kind of, you know, make this happen in a natural way so that Google does kind of give me the biggest bang for the buck? Oh, yeah, okay, it looks like things are growing nicely for the site. We'll raise the ranking. What what kind of advice would you have along those lines? Right. I would I would recommend more as opposed to, you know, doing 100, you know, forum comments or, or, or blog comments to 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 spread it up and, and do you know split things up so maybe you know and and blo- 
forum commenting and blog com commenting, by the way, is is not necessarily bad. I mean, the way most people, you know, have seen, you know, some of the link building tech tactics that they've used, you know, other people use, you know, have kind of given it a, a bad name. But you know, if if you really have something relevant, you know, if you're reading a blog and you really have something relevant to say, and and, and you post that comment, then you know, that's people are going to say, hey, this person is pretty smart. You know, maybe I should go check out what they have to offer. And that's really what you're trying to do. You know, if you just say, hey, brilliant. You know, brilliant article, uh, love what you do, you know, and, and then, you know, insert your spammy link, you know, underneath that, then it's it's not going to be so good. So I would, you know, set up set up just uh, a, a disciplined routine and maybe do, you know, find, you know, 10 of the major blogs that have a lot of traffic. And, you know, and if you have something really relevant to say, you know, do that. And the same thing with the forums. And then uh, possibly also talk to, you know, research some of the, you know, the top lateral websites and maybe, you know, every day hit four or five of them up and, you know, and talk about being an author for them. And, and, you know, and if you are authors for people, then, you know, write, you know, one or two articles a day and, and you, you know, you can just keep doing that on and on. So as opposed to doing just one big thing, bombing them with a ton of links, split it up, mix it up. It, it keeps it from being boring too. I mean, not, you know, not, not, not everybody's like me and thinks, Link building sexy as Lady Gaga and Amitra, you know, so. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. You go out there and you, you do some of that commenting, and then that's how you kind of also get their attention. So when you do approach them and go, hey, maybe I could write something for your blog, they've already seen your name on their blog because you've been commenting there. So it sounds like if there was one or two actions for anybody listening to take today, it would be go and find five to ten uh, relevant blogs in your market that you can start following and then comment on those blogs regularly in a relevant way in order to build up the links and the traction there, but then also leverage that in the future into opportunities to be interviewed or guest blog and hence get your uh, your face, your image, your expertise on that blog along with a link. And uh, if you just carve out a little bit of time every week to do those two things starting now, uh, then over time you're going to see that traction build up as links uh, as links build in, in that manner naturally, as you're seeing as well. Does that sound like a good plan for him then? Yeah, you got it. Exactly. Um, I think uh, Pat Flynn is going to be another uh, uh, one of your speakers, and, and he, he built up a huge following doing just that. Um, he would just post, you know, relevant, you know, really, really intelligent stuff on, on um, other blogs that related to what, you know, people that had a, a similar readership as him. And and pretty soon, he you know, he built up his own following. And, you know, any, any blog post he has now gets a couple hundred comments a day, you know, of other people. Right. So, so he's got a pretty, pretty big readership. One thing I would suggest, too, is, you know, don't, you know, don't do that spammy thing where, you know, after you make your comment, then insert, insert your link in there. Um, most, most blogs actually, w when you sign up, you know, for the confirmation, I'll have a place where you can put your website and everybody knows that when, you know, when they, when you, they click on, you know, your name, you know, at the top of the, you know, the comment thing there that it's going to send them to the website. So, so do that instead because that it, it, it makes it, you know, you, you lose a little bit of credibility when you start inserting your, your, uh, URL and or, you know, key phrase or whatever into the signature. Right. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Perfect. Well, I, you know, I know we could talk about link building for a long time. You could probably give <laughs> 10, 10 tips on, uh, on, you know, how to build up links, but those give, I think that we've given them a couple great actions they can start taking today to get traffic through links, hence more uh, search engine exposure. And again, this is free traffic. So it can be, and targeted traffic. It's very, very powerful. So, uh, Rob, thanks so much for uh, taking some time, uh, to chat with us. Hey, thanks for having me. And, of course, at the end of the webinar, we'll be telling you how you can hear more from Rob and learn uh, more about his link building services and ideas and get more tips as well. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish things off here. As promised, we wanted to talk to you about some you know, significant conversion results that we've been having just in the last couple months. In fact, seeing a 20% increase in our academy revenue, which if you think about it, is just a huge, a huge, nice pay raise. And, and so we're going to share with you a couple tips on how we did that. And these are the kind of tips that if you put them into action in your own business, you can see significant pay raises not only once, but again and again and again, you know, month after month in your business. And this is the way you really really kind of grow a business and reach higher levels of success is by doing these kinds of things in your conversion uh, process. Well, so I also wanted to add that the other aspect of that is that it's also something that doesn't mean more time for us. We set them right. up and now they're, they're things that are automatic. We have a team in place to do these things or they're just, we did it once and now it's going, we don't have to keep doing it. Just, so it's not just a, you know, it's something where some people think, Oh, 20% boost. Does that mean you got to work more for it? Do you have to do more for it? No, it's just set that thing up and, and that's it.
No, yeah. In fact, uh, both of us are probably working less than we have in a long time on on internet business mastery is in terms of how much time we spend on a weekly or daily basis in the business. So it's an excellent point that you bring up there. Okay, so how did we do this 20% boost in our Academy revenue? And, you know, so Academy membership site, but these tips could work whether you're selling an ebook, whether you're selling a coaching course, whether you're selling uh, a membership site of your own, whatever your product or service uh, is, these tips will work for you. So the number one thing is we did some testing on price. And a lot of people ask us, well, how do I know what price I should sell my product at? And that's always a tough question. I mean, sometimes it can seem very arbitrary uh, some, where, where prices come from. And, you know, at the beginning, you kind of have to take an educated guess. You do a little bit of surveying, if you can, of your audience to get an idea. You, you know, go to your market, see what other people are selling those similar kinds of things for. You decide if you want to price higher in order to kind of position yourself as a premium option. Or if you want to kind of just match where other people are selling similar types of information. But in, in the end, you just you start with that educated guess, but very quickly, you should try to do some testing, whether that's some split testing on a page, whether that's just trying out. I mean, often we say, you know, start out with a price that you that sounds reasonable, but say, hey, this is a charter price because this is a brand new product, a brand new membership site. And then later on, after you kind of see how that price performs, you have that option to go ahead and uh, raise the price to it and say, okay, now we're going to the official price, we're going higher. And then you can see how that price performs. And so last year we did a bunch of testing with price and and we came in and, and settled into what's been a sweet spot that's now been active on the Academy for a while that's performing very, very well for us. And in terms of, again, thinking about lifetime value of, of the customer, the value that they're getting out of our products, how much money they're spending, and you know just the, how that impacts not only how many people we're reaching. I mean, we're reaching more people now is one of the, the really cool things uh, from this increase in sales. But we're also, uh, as a result, making more money in the business, which is very cool. So price testing and really finding that sweet spot was the number one thing, uh, that the number one tip here that we did in increasing our and getting that 20% boost. Well, and again, as far as time goes, remember this, that that doesn't mean we had to, to, to think to ourselves, okay, we want to have a 20% increase in the next couple of months. Uh, should we make it a whole new product? and take all that time to create a whole new product. Do we, do you know what I mean? Like we didn't do something, we're trying to be again, smarter about how we do all the stuff that's in place now, as well as keep our time and our lifestyles the way we want it with still giving great information and all that kind of stuff, a great product that we already have ready to go and, and just doing these little things that, that can make the, the amount of money we get go up. So I just wanted to add that time element is very important. Yeah, and, and you know it's not like by you know changing the price the value has has changed. In fact, it's our newest Academy 2.0 that's at the. So this is new information. We're updating, restructuring, re-recording new stuff, adding new you know things into the Academy. So it's actually you know the value has improved at the same time as we're changing the the price and and making more money and reaching more people. It's win win across the board. But we wouldn't have known that if we hadn't have tested some different things out. The second thing is we started doing some billing follow-up. And there's always that, you know, especially if you've got like monthly recurring payments that are coming in from people or multi-payments on a coaching course, you're going to have those times where credit card numbers change or the expiration date, you know, it lapses or you know, for whatever reason, that's the payment starts, stops coming on a particular person's account. And our systems have always, you know, shot out emails and said, Hey, for whatever reason, your credit card needs to be updated. Here's the link. Could you go and update it? But we've added an additional step recently. In fact, we just had our bookkeeper, which said, Hey, would you like to do this and see how it goes? And she's just doing a nice follow-up with any Anybody who's, you know, for some reason the credit card lapses and stops working, just shoot them an email and say, hey, you know, we wanted to see if there's a new uh, credit card that we can fill in here so you can continue your access to the academy. And that's obviously paying for itself because she's able to collect more money than it takes her time to talk to these people. So, yes, we're paying her more money, but all she has to do is retain an extra two or three of these people and it pays for itself. And so that's helped with a bit of that uh, boost. So, again, no additional time for us yes we're paying more money to somebody else but you know again if somebody walked up to you and said hey uh, you know i'll give you if you give me ten dollars i'll give you a hundred dollars back well you'd take that uh, you'd be like okay well how many tens can i give you because i'll take that deal all day long um so it's a similar thing to that so billing follow-up has been another thing that's helped with that 20 percent boost 
Well, and the quick thing I wanted to add to that is she also uh, contacts the people that when they're trying to buy whatever, whether it's the Academy or a different service that we have, and they get declined because of whatever reason, uh, uh, she'll actually contact them as well and see if they have some other form of payment they want to uh, go with or, or PayPal or whatever, just to get that sale completed. And again, this is the weird thing. For years, we've let those two, are, th those are just two holes in the bucket where money were, you know, dripping out of. <laughs> right. that we weren't doing anything about. And it's just like finding these little places where you can just seal the hole at the bottom of the bucket. So more and more, uh, you know, money, or let's just say gold, let's go with the image of gold fills the bucket <laughs> instead of, you know, coming out at the bottom in these little holes that we just hadn't plugged up so that, you know, we retain that, uh, money. So uh, those were the two, the two areas specifically she, she takes care of now that keeps the money, uh, coming to us instead of just drifting off into space. Totally. The third thing that we've done is we've been testing with a video only sales page. So we've had the same text based sales page for you know, two or three years now, and it's you know, performed well for us. The Academy has had lots of people sign up for it. Lots of people go through it and uh, made us a good income. But we thought, you know, it's about time we tried a video based sales page to see how that would perform and right now the results are that that video sales page is outperforming the text based sales page this is something you just have to test I mean we're not saying okay so everyone switch to video now because again it's going to depend on your audience depend on your offer however that is quite often that these days we have been seeing that or hearing that from other colleagues that video sales pages are uh, are outperforming and what we mean by that is so when somebody clicks on the button to take advantage of an offer or to go and find out about an offer they land on a page where it's just simply a video with you talking to the camera or maybe doing a screencast just kind of talking through what the offer is why they should buy and then you know a buy button is down below that they can click on and then hence go and sign up for your offer so again that video sales page has been outpacing our text based sales page in terms of the amount of money it makes for us over time and that's still something we're uh, messing around with and testing some some other things to see why that is but that is an interesting piece of information that we wanted to share with you so the three solid tips we can give you for boosting your conversions are number one, test different prices. Number two, hire someone to do billing follow-up to whether it's declined orders or where the credit card just lapses and the person needs to be, and that could be a virtual assistant that you hire in the Philippines, that could be your bookkeeper, whatever the case may be, whoever you kind of can trust to do those kinds of things for you. Hire someone to contact people about billing. And the third thing is definitely try testing with a video only sales page to see how that performs versus maybe other things that you've tried with uh, with your particular offer. So three solid tips that you can put into action, three things that have gotten results for us recently to the tune of 20% boost in our Academy income. And we wanted to share those things with you. Thank you very much for joining this evening. It's been our pleasure to share these great tips with you. We want to hear about your continued progress, progress so please keep us in the loop on that. We hope you enjoyed uh, learning from our advisors because we know we love working with them and the results that they get us. And now you've had that uh, opportunity to learn from them as well, which is very exciting for us. Until next time, here's to your ultimate success, and we will talk to you soon.